Thank you all for joining me today to uh, this Constantia Glen wine tasting. My name is Alexander Weibel and my family owns uh, the Constantia Glen wine estate in uh, Cape Town, South Africa. We are currently not in South Africa, we are here in Austria. Uh, as you can hear from my accent, I'm uh, Austrian by birth and uh, we have this wonderful location here overlooking Lake Constance. What I would like to do is uh, maybe give you a little bit of a background of the Consentia area, a little bit of a background of Consentia Glen, and then obviously the most important part, tell you a lot, I hope, about the wines that we are making, which are two white wines and two red wines. Consentia wine area is the oldest wine area in South Africa. It also happens to be the smallest wine area and most importantly for our wines it's the coolest wine area of South Africa. We are able to make wines that have very long ripening periods or what we call very high phenolic ripenesses. If you talk about ripening times we generally use the time from the wine's bloom to when we harvest and uh, depending on the varietals depending obviously from year to year, but we are running on our late uh, ripeners. Uh, we'll talk about that later on uh, on the red wines, uh, which is our Cabernet Sauvignon, Petit Verdot. Um, we are talking about ripening times of 110 days plus. Concentia Glen is in a unique position in South African Connex. We are the coldest wine area, which obviously makes the biggest difference or from the style uh, of wines that we are making and uh, the reason being, which is uh, pretty unique because South Africa, again, for the ones who have not visited, is generally speaking warm to hot winemaking country and we being the coolest clearly are able to make wines that differentiate uh, us from what the rest of the country, most of the rest of the country, I should say, can make. If you look at the map, you will uh, easily see that uh, Consentia is very close to the center of Cape Town. We are actually inside the city boundaries of the city of Cape Town. Today it takes us about, without traffic, 15 to 20 minutes to the center of the city. Probably the biggest extent of Gru Consentia at that stage that was then split up into various wine farms, probably about 700 hectares at its peak. Today we are down to about 400 hectares. So. Um, quite a remarkable place for the new world. We are older than New Zealand, clearly. We are older than Australia. We are older than uh, North or South America. So a very, very historically important place of making wine. We are also uh, the smallest wine area because of this uh, residential developments. There are only 10 wine farms left at this stage in Consentia. We have 30 hectares under wine, so obviously slightly less than 10%. In our case, split between uh, two thirds uh, red wine and one third uh, white wine varietals. Consentia Glen was bought by my grandfather in the late 1950s, in 1959 and some parts in 1960. My grandfather came to the country not because um, of his interest in wine. He was actually uh, compelled to go to South Africa in order to uh, start a textile company. At the time when he bought it, the farm was uh, what we call a mixed farming. So we had some vineyards on it. Uh, we also had cattle and uh, we had some orchards, uh, the orchards producing mainly apples and pears, which gives you a little indication of what kind of uh, climate we have, because apples and pears both are fruits that need coolish uh, climates. It took us till the mid-90s uh, to decide that we wanted to bring it back to its original purpose, which was clearly making wine. It was a not so difficult decision, since all the neighboring uh, farms were also producing wine. We were pretty clear what kind of wines we wanted to make. Uh, the important part for us was to speak to all the experts to make sure that our soils, our terroir, which is soil, climate and what people make out of it, were suitable for the varietals that we had intended to plant on the farm, um, which were Bordeaux varietals, which uh, in our case would be two white Bordeaux varietals and five red Bordeaux varietals. The initial investigation from uh, the University of Stellenbosch confirmed that we are able to uh, produce these Bordeaux varietals uh, in Consentia. 
and that gave us the final, the final push to start um, a development that took us from the mid 90s uh, till about uh, 2007, which was uh, the year when we built our wine cellar. So it was almost a 10 year uh, delay from starting to develop Consentia Glen to when we were able to make our first uh, red wines, which was in 2007. The farm uh, is now, as I say, owned by my family in the third generation and um, gave us a lot of pleasure and a lot of um, excitement. We had good times, we had bad times, we had challenging times and uh, through all of that we never lost our vision to try and make wines that not only we felt are right for our flavor profiles but wines that we felt should stand the test of time and should also stand the test in the international markets and uh, I'm sure we can continue to go from strengths to strengths with our wines. <laughs> Whatever the clapping means, let's get to the point. And the point is obviously, as I always say, the point is in tasting the wines. It doesn't make any difference if I tell you a thousand words about the wines, which I'm going to do right now. Uh, the, mo the proof of the pudding lies in eating it clearly and um, I will explain to you, I will try to explain to you, but uh, I really, really would encourage you to try and get your hands on a bottle of our uh, Consentia Glen wines and then uh, join me online again on, uh, on doing the tasting because, uh, as I say, I can give you the theory, but um, it, never, it never holds up to a real tasting to what's in the glass. The glass, what's in the glass, should tell you more than a thousand words that I'm going to say now. To start off with, uh, we have a very small portfolio uh, of wines, uh, actually two white wines and two red wines. On purpose, uh, as I explained before, we had a very clear vision of what we wanted to make and uh, we were able to, um, because we started new, we were able to plant exactly what we wanted, we were able to plant the varietals exactly on the spots where we wanted to have them and the right terroir and we were able to make exactly the wines that we felt are the right wines for uh, the Consentia area and the right wines for um, us and it turned out to be for many many people who enjoy uh, our products. We have two white wines, the one is the Consentia Glen Sauvignon Blanc, as the name, name says is uh, made out of 100%, almost 100% uh, Sauvignon Blanc and Semillon in it and Consentia Glen 2 would be a blend of Sauvignon Blanc and Semillon. So people ask me why 2, we later come to red wines, why 3, why 5. Um, what we did, um, we wanted to make it easy, we wanted to make it easy for us and for hopefully um, our customers. Once we go into the numbers, it tells you no more and no less than how many varietals are in the wine. So two would be uh, two varietals, three, three varietals and five, five varietals. I really like to start tastings with our Sauvignon Blanc because it shows the terroir that I described before uh, very, very well. Uh, it's the wine that is the least interfered by humans in the sense that uh, it's harvested uh, in February and then uh, goes into a stainless steel tank. We uh, make it very classical, uh, which means it's done in a reductive way with as little oxygen um, as possible. And then it's just fermented, it takes about a month for fermentation. And afterwards it's raked a few times, then we stir the lees. And then basically speaking, it's bottled in September and ready for consumption in October, November. The first wine we're going to taste is our Sauvignon Blanc. It's, uh, as I said before, 50% of the plantings in Consentia are Sauvignon Blanc. The nose is very much uh, based on northern climatic, I would call them green berries. Um, so we are talking elderflowers, we are talking Cape gooseberries, uh, and far less um, the tropical flavor profiles that you would find in more warmer climates um, 
which would be more the guave, the possibly uh, mango and, um, and fig flavor profiles. So this one has a little bit of it, but the majority would be northern berry fruit flavors. And distinguishing point on the Sauvignon Blanc is the acidity. So this is very, very much a cool climate Sauvignon Blanc and in blind tastings, we are very often compared to the beginning of the Loire Valley, which is uh, no more than about 300 kilometers away from Paris. Very cool climate. Uh, Sancerre, Pierre Fumé are in blind tastings very often um, taken as uh, the closest to what our Concentric Glen Sauvignon Blanc shows. Not at all uh, a New World flavor profile, very much uh, a European Old World flavor profile. The second wine uh, I'm going to taste um, is, uh, we are going to taste, is our Concentra Glen 2. It too um, means made out of two varietals, Sauvignon Blanc and Semillon. So the Sauvignon Blanc is obviously similar to the Concentra Glen Sauvignon Blanc that we tasted first. And 70% uh, of it uh, is in our Concentra Glen 2 and 30% um, is Semillon. The big difference is that uh, the wines are made in a completely different style. Uh, our Sauvignon Blanc is made reductive, so with as little oxygen as possible, only in the stainless steel tank. Basically speaking, never leaves the first floor of our gravity-fed cellar, whereas the Concentra Glen 2 is uh, actually fermented in barrel. We use 600 liter barrels and then is kept in barrel for uh, about eight months before we finally blend it and then bottle it. So, uh, Concentric Glen 2 is always kept in the lower floor where we have got our barrel cellar. You can already see on the color before we even taste it. I would look at the color, always start looking at the color first, ideally with a white background in order to not be distracted. And you can see already from the color, it's more intense color, which is partly the barrels add color to the wine. And what barrels do as well is they add generally vanilla. So if you uh, combine barrels with white wine, you will always get a certain amount of vanilla sweetness flavor, if you want to call it that way. For us, it was very important that we do not lose the acidity, that we do not lose the freshness that the Sauvignon Blanc brings, and we don't want to have the wine overpowered with barrel, so we are very careful in our barrel regime, um, basically speaking, using 20% of first uh, fill barrel, and then uh, equal amounts of second, third, fourth and fifth fill. The vanilla, the sweetness flavor is one of a one, it, it's part of our, especially on the nose, you get it, it's part of it, but it's not overpowering. It does not distract from the very, very intense fruit flavors that the Semillo adds to this blend. On the two, also happens on the Sauvignon Blanc, but the Semillo then kicks in and the Semillo is all fruit and very little acidity. So it's a wine that will last for a very, very long time. We only produced, started producing it in 2011. Um, we have done a vertical tasting and it's still drinking spectacularly good. So the lifespan of this two, say we can't say yet, I assume it's somewhere between 15 and uh, 20 years. Now that we have finished our white wines, let's move on to our two red wines. Um, as I say, again, very simple. Uh, the one is called Concentra Glen 3, the other one is called Concentra Glen 5. The 3 is obviously made out of three varietals. And um, it's almost made to a recipe, which means just very much like our Concentra Glen 2, which means every year, um, it comes out from a blending point of view very similar in the sense that uh, the two is always uh, Sauvignon Blanc based, as I said before, about 70%. The three is always Merlot based. So we are talking between 55 and 65% 65 of Merlot. And then um, the two other varietals in it would be Cabernet Franc followed by Cabernet Sauvignon. The reason for having the three Merlot based is Merlot is our most planted red varietal on Concentra Glen. It's an early, what we call an early ripener. So it's the first variety that gets harvested in autumn on the red uh, wines. 
and uh, it's because it's an early ripener, it's very fruity, it's very upfront, it opens up very early, it's earlier drinkable, and um, if you have a sip, or actually a smell first, then you will realize that the fruit is, is really, really strong, even when it's younger, we generally tend to release our three about a year to two years before our five. Very, very strong fruit flavors, very Merlot-based fruit flavors. So we are talking um, cherries, we are talking sandalwood, we are talking um, lighter red uh, berries, clearly uh, followed by some later varietals like uh, Cabernet Franc and Cabernet Sauvignon that give it a little bit more of a body. So, again, when tasted blind, many people would put the Consentia Glen 3 into the Bordeaux area and mainly, obviously, right bank. Right bank um, is more Merlot based, whereas the left bank of the Gironde in Bordeaux is more Cabernet Sauvignon based. What we also do is, um, because we are using uh, Merlot as our base, as our most um, biggest ingredients uh, in the Consentia Glen 3. Merlot is an early ripener, so it's not as dense and as intense as our late varietals, which is Cabernet Sauvignon and Petit Verdot. So we tend to give it less oak. Uh, Merlot is normally uh, aged, uh, in our case, uh, at Consentia Glen, in second or third uh, fill barrel. And if we blend it together, we roughly have a one-third, one-third, one-third uh, combination of um, barrel aging. So we use one-third first fill, we use one-third second fill, and we use one-third third fill. Uh, on the coopers, I don't want to go too much into details, we use very different coopers, about five to six different coopers. Uh, they all come from France. Our barrels are all 225 litre barrels um, from various uh, coopers, various forests in uh, France. And um, again, as I say, the fruit I mentioned already, the mid palate. Hmm. Mid palate, very elegant, and then a long, long finish. We tend to, in Consentia, Glen, our most important issue on red wines is to make wines that are elegant and complex. That is the basic theme for our five as well as our three. For us, it's very important on our red wines. We would ideally like to make wines where the three varietals and the oak are very well integrated. So it should be a situation where you have the beginning, you have the middle mid palate, and then you have got a long finish. And now let's finish off the tasting with our Consentia Glen 5, which is, I would say, our flagship wine. It's also the most complex wine that we are making. So there is not really a recipe, unlike uh, what we have on our Consentia Glen 2 or our Consentia Glen 3. It's five varietals that we try every year uh, to identify the best parcels, the best plots, the best lots, the best what we can do every year. And every year is not the same, depends on weather conditions, depends on many, many imponderabilities. So the Consentia Glen 5 has got no recipe, but the one thing that uh, it has always in common is that it's based on what we call our late ripeners. So that would be um, our Cabernet Sauvignon clearly, our Petit Verdot and the Cabernet Franc. They form the base of our Consentia Glen 5, uh, always 60% plus. Because they are late uh, ripeners, the grapes are much more fruit intensive. Uh, we tend to use more first fill oak on them. So that is the reason why the Consentia Glen 5 is about 80% uh, first fill oak and 20% uh, second fill, unlike the Consentia Glen 3 that has got less intense oak regime. And um, yeah, that's a interesting one to taste. On the nose, you will pick up um, less fruit flavors than on the three, um, more intense 
notes of um, deep, deep fruit, deep, deep berries. I almost struggle to um, describe it because um, the complexity is very, very high and we have a situation where the Cabernet Sauvignon adds a lot of backbone and so does our Petit Verdot. There is a combination here, uh, to me, plums to a certain extent. We have um, very, very dark, dark uh, berries. We have got a lot of tannins, but tannins that are very well integrated. I think that is the important part. I cannot uh, emphasize that enough. Tannins that are well integrated. If you, if you make wines as intense as this Concentra Grand 5, you have to make sure that the tannins that you're using match the intensity of the fruit. The more intense the fruit is, the more oak you can give it. And the oak does not distract from the fruit, but it enhances the fruit. That is uh, what we're trying to do here. That's why I'm said 80% um, first fill, 20% second fill. Mm. Second thing you will immediately pick up is the finish of the Concentra Glen 5 is almost unique, I think, for a wine with such intensity in the sense that you will have a long finish, but at the end of the very end of the finish, there is a, there is a freshness to it, which is nothing else in our case but the acidity that we are able to achieve because we have such cool climate wines where the grapes ripen for such a long time. And I mentioned at the very beginning about our luck uh, in the sense that um, we are able to ripen our late ripeners, Cabernet Sauvignon, Petit Vador, I mentioned it before, a little bit of Cabernet Franc, uh, at 110 days, 120 days. So this gives us wines that on the one hand are extremely in, extremely uh, flavor, have extremely high flavor profile, but at the end still give you a freshness that entices you, <laughs> like it entices me now, to have a second sip and not feel as if you had had a meal. Uh, we don't want to make wines that just knock you, knock your socks off and you have one glass and that's the end of it. You think you've had a meal already. This is a wine, even though it's so intense that you can easily drink a few glasses. Hopefully a second bottle, depends on the circumstances. I hope you enjoyed uh, tasting these wonderful wines with me and it doesn't matter how much I said, to my opinion still, a sip in the glass says more than a thousand words that I've just told you. But if it was an enticement for you to try our wines, please do so. I would be very, very pleased. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.